Hi, Simon from Urban Timers here and in this video I'm gonna take you through a full process of energy efficiency improvement to central heating and hot water system in this 4,000 square feet property. At the moment the energy consumption of this house is around 50,000 kilowatt hours per year. I've calculated the heat loss and energy consumption for this house and it should be well below 40,000 kilowatt hours for both heating and hot water. Owners of this property never heat more than half of the house, usually just one third of the house, because there's only three people at the property. They probably should be using around 25,000 to 30,000 kilowatt hours per year of gas for both heating and hot water. On top of that, there is a two, 300 liters hot water cylinders, unvented cylinders, so it's 600 liters of stored water, and they never have enough hot water for three people. So there's clearly something terribly wrong uh, with the hot water system. And what we have here are two 24 kilowatt system boilers. And I did the heat loss calculations and it turns out this property is 18 and a half kilowatt heat loss. So we don't need 48 kilowatts here at all. We only need 24 kilowatt boiler here. Ground floor is fully underfloor heating on two large manifolds. Upstairs is radiators. There is probably five or six bathrooms at this property. We are in the loft now and in here we've got two 300 liters unvented cylinders. So six, seven people could use one of those cylinders with no shortage of hot water or 14, 15 people if there are two of them. So the plan is to remove one of those cylinders and keep the other. And at the same time, the base is pretty rotten. So I'll have to change the base as well. It's 20 years old, 17 years without a water softener, last three years with a water softener. And it's a hard water area, so I'm surprised to see no scale. So there must be something uh, to do with uh, softened water actually dissolving scale while it goes through the cylinder. And this confirms that I can keep the cylinder because it's perfectly fine inside. Scale, build up, it's not there, so it's not gonna affect our efficiency. So we sacrificed one cylinder just to confirm that we don't need to replace the second one. Now, do we need that pump? That's eight meter head pump. We also have 35 millimeters primaries, so they were sizing it for 50 kilowatts really on Delta T20, because we could use 24 kilowatts on 22 millimeters throughout the house. That wouldn't be a problem, not with uh, velocity and also not with the pressure loss. Can we use just the boiler pump and remove the low loss header? Because if I do that, that simplifies my life so much. I only have one pump that's controlled by the boiler and modulated by the boiler. That will allow me much higher efficiency. My main worry is, is two and a half meter head enough to overcome the resistance on the uh, first floor? I spoke to the client and I said, let's give it a try. Let's remove the low loss header. Let's remove it the way that it's easy to put back if needed. And let's try to run it just on the boiler pump because it will make the system so much more efficient and it also simplifies the system. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm not worried if I make a mistake. I'm not worried if the pump is undersized and the radiators don't get hot because I can always put the low loss header back. What's important is making client aware of the possibility it might not work. And also I want to satisfy my own curiosity and see, can I run 18 and a half kilowatt house, 4,000 square feet just on one boiler? just on the boiler pump. So hopefully by now the cylinder is fully drained. So I'll go up there and remove the cylinder and redo the pipe work there and put a new, new plywood base. So I took this thing out on my own. Yeah, with great difficulties. Now I have to drag that thing on my own back in. Actually, it was quite easy. I've got my deck finished, tidied up the wiring, time to fill the system and turn it all back on and test it because it's already five o'clock. Time to go home. Now for the most daunting task of this whole job, wiring and controls. I want to use sensor comfort to convert the system to hot water priority. However, there's a number of problems. The boilers are in the garage. The cylinder is two floors away in the loft. No way of running wires. Well, I mean, you can always run wires, but that would be too disruptive. 
the power comes all the way up from the loft. That's where the spare switch is and it supplies power everywhere to here and to two manifolds that I'll show you in a second. And in here on the ceiling is yet another wiring center and zone vaults for radiators and tower rails. So I've got one, two, three, four, five wiring centers full of wires, 10, at least 10 each to figure out and see if I can make it work. What I'm doing now, I'm going through all the wiring centers, figuring out how they are wired and writing it down. So I've got this one figured out. All the wiring we have here is just room stat wiring. Three core and earth wires to every stat. Every stat has permanent life, neutral, switched life and earth. Every single stat has the ability to open one of corresponding zone valves and fire the pump. They also fire this main zone valve. One zone valve opens, the pump will always fire, this valve will always open. And that valve sends a switched life back to where the cylinders are on a three core and earth gray wire. It probably goes to a, a main switch life going back to the boiler. So at least we've got one wiring center figured out and there is four more to go. <sighs> we are back in the loft where the cylinder is and this little spare switch here, that's the spare switch that isolates power to all boilers, all controls, everything. I really want to see if it powers more wires coming back. So I believe there will be at least two separate wires going back. One, five core going back to the boiler with switched life and power. And there should be at least one more non-flexible, I think three core on earth going to wiring centers. Maybe two if we're lucky. A little longer than a few minutes later. Looks like I've got good news. Four separate two core on earths going as power supply to four different places. And I think it's gonna be boiler, one manifold, second manifold and programmer. I don't understand why they need four separate power supplies. They could have run one single wire, but I'm glad they did four. Leaves me a lot of spares. And as I go, I take quite detailed notes of what every wiring center does. So I don't have to figure it out again, because it's impossible to remember it all. It's time to wire the boilers now. They are running not right now on switched live, just 230 volts, standard s -plan Plus. So I'll be removing the uh, 230 switched life and I'm gonna use BAS. BAS is a uh, communication protocol and it also supplies power to controllers and it's violent specific so only violent boilers work with uh, violent controllers on, on, on this BAS protocol. And also I'm wiring a weather compensator, it's already outside on the wall. And so going to the boilers, I only have two, two core wires, two cores for my uh, eBus controls they send all the communication, all the information to the boiler from controllers and two core for weather comp. So on the PCB itself, this is switched live, this control, this plug here. I'm going to remove it and because RT link is missing, I need to put it back in. I'm going to use this plug with a link inside to plug it here. Then my bus controls, two core will go here and then there'll be another uh, plug going with two cores for weather comp. So original installers, they've removed RT plugs from both boilers. Bugger. This plug you get with a weather comp and you have to plug it in to the PCB. So those are weather comp wires. So the wiring at the boiler is done. Now we have life neutral earth going to the PCB, bus communication wire and weather comp. Bus communication wire goes to the controller right there. I've got all my wires here to my controller VR71 run. My contactors for third party controls as well. We've got our controller for Valent uh, Sensor Comfort VRC720, that's weather compensated control, but it's only acting as a timer and controller, it will not read temperature. Here in the hallway, I see yet another one of those manifolds. As you can see, another wiring center there that I had to partially rewire. 
I'll spare you the details of what I had to do because your head would probably explode. What I've got to do here is put this little sensor NTC so it will read the temperature of the cylinder and send it back to the boiler through VR71 through the wiring center. We're not going to rely on standard cylinder stats. What I actually have done, there's an overheat stat and a thermostat. I've disconnected them. I'll be only using overheat stat. So my zone valve will be wired through the overheat stat. If it ever trips, it will shut the zone valve. But the thermostat in here, that's now bypassed. We don't need it because we use NTC instead. We don't have a pocket, so I have to scrape a bit of insulation and slide that NTC inside. On such a complexity of wiring, it would be a miracle if I haven't made a mistake. So, let's see. Right, nothing tripped. That's a good news. I might have wired it all right. That would be something. I'm just setting it all up and the system can see all my sensors. I've got three sensors, one sensor on each zone and a sensor on hot water. So that's all visible. You can also see that the boiler has fired on maximum output on hot water and is charging the cylinder now. I'm gonna run upstairs and see if the zone valve opens and everything works all right there. Zone valve is open. And yeah, the hot water is charging now. So far so good and everything seems to be working fine. So I've got three zones and the whole idea of this setup is that I can set weather curves for every single zone. So when it's zero outside, I'm gonna set the temperature, maximum temperature of my uh, radiator circuit to 70, but under floor heating, I will set maximum flow temperature to 45. And that will allow the boiler to modulate even lower and run at even lower temperatures when it's warmer than zero degrees. And also the hot water takes priority now and the boiler fires uh, reading the NTC on the cylinder and the flow temperature and adjust accordingly. All those changes that we have done, removal of one of the boilers, removal of one of the cylinders and all the hot water priority additions should save them at least 20% on their fuel bills. So one more thing I have to have a look at which is a secondary circulating pump because they were complaining that before we started the works they had 600 liters of water, massive bills, and they never had any hot water on top of that. I believe it's because of the low loss header, the way the boilers were set up, they were never going to uh, 65, 70 degrees recharging the cylinders. And on top of that, the secondary circulating pump was uh, probably running constantly on an insulated pipe work simply losing heat from the cylinders, depleting the cylinders, circulating water around the house and uh, through the pipework, uh, losing energy. And now the moment of truth. I've turned all the zones on, radiators, tower rails and all underfloor heating. So I've put the boiler in the chimney sweep, maximum output, that will force the pump uh, to maximum output as well. And I'm gonna see if that poor boiler pump is enough to circulate water around all the underfloor heating and all the radiators and tower rails. This radiator is already hot, middle of the property. Let's check the other ones. The furthest radiator in the loft. It's not the index circuit though. 50 degrees already. This one's just hot. So there you have it. I'm finished here. My boiler is on its own, handling the house now. Radiators are getting hot. Underfloor heating works fine, no circulation issues whatsoever. This little boiler here is just for spares now. Decommissioned, drained down, disconnected. Uh, low loss header removed, no need for low loss header anymore. It's here on the shelf. Everything is being controlled through Sensor Comfort Programmer now, through VR71, uh, using, unfortunately, using third party controls, because I think there's 12 ther thermostats for underfloor heating on the ground floor and another control for tower rails and yet another control for radiators upstairs. It could have been done on valent controls, but so many zones would require VR92s and I think the 160 quid each and we would need at least 10 of them and then VR70s extensions to that. So I offered that, but the cost was just prohibitive to do it on, on valent controls. Alternatively, the system could be simplified, but again, the owners wanted to have influence over which parts of the house are heated and which aren't. So 
I had to keep it on third-party controls. And there are two options. If there is no follow-up to this video on this job, that means that this project failed and they probably kidnapped me and you'll never see me again. And if this is successful, I will post a follow-up video next year where we will compare energy use from previous year and we'll discuss uh, how the system performs. Hopefully, there will be a follow-up to this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.